God, thank you. Thank you, oh God, for just being God. You're God all by yourself. It's in you that we live. We move. And we have our being. And God, we thank you, oh God, for saving us. You didn't have to do it, but God, you chose us. You saved us. You baptized us. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. And God, for that, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. If it had not been for you on our side, Father God, where would we be? And God, we come, oh God, to worship you. In our spirits, we come to worship you. In truth. Because you are God. Yes, you are. You desire, you seek those that will worship. God, we thank you now. Thank you, Lord. I pray, oh God, for this congregation yes. that you will continue to bless us. Yes. We love you, God. We love you, God. Yes. We love you, God. Yes. Not like you. Yes. But God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you, oh God, for every word that was yes. spoken, every song that was sung, yes. every prayer that was uttered. Yes. Yes. And pray, oh God, that you will bless us, oh God, in this hour. And I pray that the words of my mouth, yeah. the meditations of my heart, let them be accepted in sight. Yeah. You're my strength and my redeemer. Yeah. And God, we thank you for it now. Yeah. And all of God's people say amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen in the house of the Lord. And when you get good and comfortable, give God the best hand clap, the best hand clap. honor to God who is ahead of my life. Amen. To all of you, amen, God's people, I thank God for just being here. Thank God that I am saved. I am sanctified. And I am Holy Ghost still. Amen. I stay saved, not against my will. Amen. But I want to be saved. Yeah, I love God, amen, with every being in my body. Amen. We thank God, amen, for you on today. Thank God, amen, for this great long district. Amen. Let's give our consent of the great long district. Amen. Thank God, amen, for the long district on today. Amen. Two, Albert Gladney, when it was up to introduce me, he said, what do I do? I said, do what you do. <laughs> Didn't he do what he do? Yeah. Let's give him a God bless your hand. Amen. Thank God. Amen. For, amen. I'm glad Gladney, Pastor Danny. Thank God for Pastor Ward. Amen. Thank God for them. Amen. Thank God for Elder Bailey. Amen. To this great giant man of God. Amen. Elder Addison. Amen. Then he lead us into the prison. See, 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 sometimes people don't understand the power, the influence of a voice that love God. Amen. And in charge of leading people into the worship of God. Amen. I heard someone say, if you sing and you don't feel it, nobody else gonna feel it. Right. If you preach it and you don't feel it, nobody else gonna feel it. Right. Amen. So when we do anything for the Lord, you ought to feel something. Amen. Not in the church of God in Christ, not even in my nose, not in the church of God in Christ. You can't get up dry. All right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You, you can't tell me how to get a million dollars if you don't have ten dollars. God is good and you don't act like he's good. He's a way maker and you don't act like he's a way maker. He's a burden bearer and you don't act like he's a burden bearer. No, you got to know this for yourself. First lady said, when we come to the gates, right. coming to his courts, your mind ought to be set on praising and worshiping the Lord. Forget about yesterday, forget about what happened last week. And then, this is the hour, this is the day. God peddler. 
Johnson, our Bishop Davis, Amen. Today, Amen. Thank God for all these great men of God. Amen. Thank God, Amen, for Minister Washington, Old Texas. He, he got to talk. My lips begin to smack. And then he said, Old Texas, he got the Lord. My hand went up. That the Lord is not only my lips back, but my hands went up that the Lord is good to me. But stomping in my feet and clapping in my hands. Yeah. Thank God, amen, thank God, for, amen, the interim pastor of New Hope Church of God, I mean, uh, Living Word, Church of God in Christ, amen, Elder Pastor Leon. Amen. 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 Well, yes, and thank God, amen, for him, amen, on today. Amen to my own wife, amen, Sister Bonita Cross. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> was it Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. She had the accident Wednesday. And uh, I, I work late, and so I ain't no telling when I'm coming home. Sometimes I don't know when I'm coming home. But uh, anyway, I looked at my clock, it was 11 o'clock. I ain't heard from her. I said, it's not Saturday when she get her hair done. I said, I ain't heard from her. Then 12 o'clock rolled around. I said, no, where this girl? Where she at? And then I had to call her. And she said, baby, I'm, I'm at the hospital. Someone hit me in the back of my car. And uh, my, my neck feel a little funny. And she talked to her, her girlfriend, Sister Mary. And to Mary said, you better go to the hospital. And so she wound up at the hospital. And, and then I still ain't heard from her. And then at 1.30, you know, I was wrestling, I was trying to go to sleep. But sometimes when you reach up, don't feel nothing. <laughs> you know, you ain't trying to do nothing, you just trying to feel somebody. You know what I mean? Y'all, y'all get that when you get on. You know, trying to make sure the person is there. And I, I picked up the phone and said, girl, where you at? And she told me the story, I said, I'm coming up. And I went up and they sent us to Oklahoma City and, and they looked at everything and she, she's going to be all right. That's right. Yeah. 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 It, it could have been worse. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I look at life like this. I, I, I learned this in accounting. I had a D in accounting, but it was one class. But it's all right. It's all right. The professor said, you can never reach the highest number. When you think you have the highest number, all you got to do is add one. Amen. You never outdo numbering. You never outdo God. Things can be worse. That, that's my whole point. Things can be worse. You think it's bad, it can get worse. You might have an ache in your knee, your back might be hurting. Things can always get worse. But I Oh, you thank God, Amen, for Mother Stevenson. Amen. 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 Thank God, Amen, for Sister Gladney. Amen. And all the kids and all the pastors. Thank God, Amen, for you. Amen. Thank God for this great music department. Amen. Amen. I'm taking my time because we only do this one time a year. Come on. We only meet that different one time a year. And we thank God, Amen, for you on, Amen, on today. Thank God for our addition missionary, Mother Hamilton. Yeah. Give she do an outstanding job. Yeah. Yeah. Not only Mother Hamilton, but Mother Maddox. Yeah. I, I just love God's word. Yeah. I just love God's word. Man, God will pick you up when you're down. Yeah. Make you feel rich when you're broke. <laughs> Make you poor when you're hungry. Yeah. And I, I just love all taste and see. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. First Corinthians 
Philippians, the 15th chapter, verse number 58. Would you stand for the reading of the word? Amen. Thank God for these great urshers. Amen. And when Brother Hampton asked and volunteered, we thank God for them. Amen. The adult urshers and also the junior urshers. Amen. Little Brother Wilson and Little Brother Wilson. Amen. Thank God, amen, for them. Amen. On today. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 58. I tell people all the time, you never leave home without your cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Come on. I'm, I'm looking around. Don't, don't, don't get mad at me. But some of you don't have your cell phone, you're not trying to find the scripture. Some of y'all don't have your Bible, you're not trying to find the scripture. I know what y'all thinking, the pastor, he's going to read the scripture anyway, so why should I have it? To make sure I'm telling you the truth. All right. We're living at that time where people are telling people everything. Amen. They call themselves churches or they call themselves ministries, but they're not churches. They just gatherings. Come on, preach up. The churches are called out by the born again believers. Come on, yes, sir. Born again believers that yes, love God. Yes, and then the love of God, amen, is doing. Yes, First Corinthians 15 and 15. Some of you got your program. I'll talk to you too. You got your program. <laughs> First Corinthians 15 and 15. Therefore, my beloved brethren, uh -huh. just not talk to anybody. These are beloved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled brethren. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always. Somebody say always. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, say I know. Come on, y'all can give me a better. I know. I know. Seated. You may be seated. Today I want to talk to you from this thought, stand firm. Stand firm. We give all honor and glory to God. Thank God for saving me. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Talk about it, about it. He chose me before the foundation of the world. I believe that to save me. He adopted me. And called me to be one of his sons. And called you to be one of his daughters. We didn't get saved on our own. You didn't give the preacher your hand and say, I want to be saved. No, God had you in mind before he formed you in your mother's womb. I thank God, amen, for the long district, for the members of the churches. It's been another year. And we are here. As it was stated on Friday night, we have the best pastors, Amen. the best members, the best churches, and the greatest district. And if you have the greatest pastor, give God a great big victory shout. I stole that from Bishop, uh, what's his name? Porter. <laughs> yeah. All night was great. Missionary Hampton did an outstanding job. Amen. Missionary Hampton did an outstanding job. Amen. They gave an awesome word. I, I, I love the word of God. It gave me life. It gave me hope, joy, and a reason to keep standing. Amen. Without the word of God, I wouldn't be able to stand. Amen. Matter of fact, without the word of God, I would go crazy. Amen. I would be a lunatic. Elevate don't go all the way to the top. <laughs> Couple of missing screws. Right. Marble's not always there. Yes, but I love God. I love the word of God. <laughs> life, life has a way that will call you to really yeah. look into God's word. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Life will bring problems and call you to look into God's word because you know deep down in you find hope in the word of God. Yeah. You find hope in the word of God. God. Amen. In our text today, Paul says, therefore. Yes, sir. Paul starts this text, therefore. therefore. Whenever you read this word, therefore, or wherefore, it causes you to ask the question, why is it therefore? Why is it? That's right. It's just not a word, just not a filler that Paul decided to use. Amen. But he said, therefore, because he talks about uh, a death. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Come on, sir. You, you must look at what Paul Paul said. Therefore, you must look at what Paul wrote in the.
grievous verses. Yeah. Those of you that study the Bible know you just can't take one verse and make a doctrine out of it. Yeah. Uh, you just can't take one verse and get a word from it. You got to read the verses before and sometime after to find out what the preacher is trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's much more than just being steadfast. Yeah. Steadfast for what? Unmovable for what? Always abounding for what? Always laboring for what? what? Yeah. Paul is accustomed to using stuff like uh, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. In verse 51 he said, Behold I show you a mystery. He said things like we shall all be changed in a moment and in a twinkling of an eye. Yes sir. Yes, sir. Say things like mortal shall be turned into immortality, the corporal shall put on incorruption. And he said the sting of death is sin. Come on, yeah. Come on. Yeah, the sting of death is sin. That's right. Yeah. When I read that and was studying this uh, missionary Hamilton, I thought about the last time I got stung by a bee. Come on, Come on sir. Talk about it. But I thank God that Jesus took the sting out of death. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Thank God that he took the sting out of death. See, if you're afraid of dying, I don't know, thank you, Holy Ghost. If you're afraid of dying, something wrong with your religion. Something wrong with your religion. Y'all probably never heard that before. Can I testify? <laughs> Sometimes I'll pray and say, God save me or kill me. Uh-huh. I know y'all y'all won't talk about that, but Pastor Cross do. I, I talk to God, everything that comes to my mind. I tell the Lord. Sometimes I pray that God save me or kill me. So God just decided to save me. He ain't killed me, so he saved me. But 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 but, but I, 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 last time I got stung by B. Uh, I didn't ask that B, do you have another stinger? Oh. <laughs> I didn't ask, I didn't stop to try to find that B to see if his stinger going to grow back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on. No, no, no. I, 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 when, when he stung me, you know, they tell me that when, when a bee stings right. uh -huh. and loses his stinger, he goes somewhere and dies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, when, when Jesus died on the cross, he took the sting out of death. Yeah. So death can't hurt us no more. Paul's whole context was telling them, hey amen, don't be afraid of death or dying because God, Jesus, took the sting out of death. Yeah. Yes, sir. And as a child of God, you have to fear death because death is not the end of the story. Yeah. 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 I, I, I strive. I strive to know him in the fellowship of his suffering and, and the power of his resurrection. Yes, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Paul writes stuff like, Oh, death, where is thy sting? <laughs> oh, grave, where is thy victory? Yes, yeah, yes. death is swallowed up. In victory. Paul was writing like someone that knew what he was talking about. Yeah. He had that assurance that if he died, yeah. he will be resurrected. Yeah. He will be resurrected. Yeah. He tells us that there will be a resurrection. Uh -huh. There is power in the resurrection. Yeah. This is an assurance. Yeah. We sing the song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Yeah. Amen. There is an assurance that there will be a resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, this life is not the end of it. Yeah. It's just a gateway to death. And death is a valley or a hallway into eternal life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And in this Christian world, uh, you, you have to know that you know. Amen. You got to know that you know that there is a resurrection. Amen. There will be a change. You must say like Jesus, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Yes. Not only in death, but also in this life. Yes. Look at your neighbor say, not only at death, but in this life. Yes. You got to know that you know. Yes. You got to know that you know. Yes. Top of the list of man's greatest fear is death. Now y'all y'all be honest, don't lie in the church. <laughs> How many y'all are afraid of dying? Okay, y'all not telling the truth. <laughs> but as a 
child of God, you shouldn't be afraid of death. Amen. Paul addressed this for the believers as well as the unbelievers. He tells the believers that we have victory over death. Amen. Yeah, we have victory over death. Thanks be to God who give us the victory through Christ Jesus. Amen. We have the victory. Yeah. Verse 7, 47, he said the first man is earth. Come on. Earthly. The second man is from above. Yeah. Earthly is earthly. Yeah. Heavenly is heavenly. Yeah. Born once, die twice. Yeah. Born twice, die once. Right. Jesus is coming back. Yes. We, 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 we had time to say that Jesus is coming back at the church without a spot or wrinkle, but that's not true. Yes. That, that, that's not true. He's not coming back after the church. It's without spot or wrinkle. You don't believe me? Look at Ephesians 5, 26 and 27. I didn't believe it either until I started reading the study. Because we've been brought up saying that he's coming back after church without spot or wrinkle. But that's not so. When I read Ephesians 5, 26 and 27, it tells me that Jesus is preparing the church. A glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. He's preparing Let me break it down. Break it down. Have you ever seen an ugly bride? <laughs> Most brides are pretty. Are pretty. Right. <laughs> they go get the makeover or the make up. Right. Or the redo. Come on. They dress in their best dress. They don't want no bridesmaid to upstage them. All right. <laughs> They're the best looking thing that day because it's their day. God is preparing the church the same way. God, Jesus is preparing the church the same way. Giving us the very best. Giving us a makeover. Giving us a redo. There might be a spot in your garden. There might be a wrinkle. And then you'll go, but Jesus is preparing you to present to himself. Matter of fact, you can't do it by yourself anyway. That's right. That's for sure. How many y'all try to live, I mean, I mean, totally sanctified? And then you look back over your life and say, oh man, I failed that one. See, that, see that, that, that's why Jesus is getting the church ready to present to himself a bride. Huh? A glory, a bride, a glorious bride. How huh? Jesus is doing that. We, we can't get ourselves ready. That's why I thank God for Jesus. Mother time, I will wear hard because we try to do it ourselves. You better dress up for Jesus. Yeah. G -G Jesus paid, he paid it all. He paid it all. He, he did it all. He wanted to present to himself a spotless, wrinkle-free, glorious bride. That's an insurance. It's a done deal. I'm already sanctified. I'm already saved. I'm already in the presence of God. That he might present her to himself. Not unto him, uh, Jews said, now to him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless. Yeah. Yeah. That's that we did, but he's going to present us yeah. faultless. Now I have dealt with the therefore. Well, Here's the victory. victory. This is what we do. Paul says, be steadfast. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, steadfast. Yeah. Steadfast. Yeah. And the Greek the word is head dry us. It means to be seated. Uh, Have you ever had a problem? All you can do is sit down and just shake your head. No, there's nothing you can do about it. Family acting crazy, children acting crazy, job trying to fire you. All you can do is sit down and just shake your head. <laughs> Steadfast means to be settled. To be firm in the truth of the resurrection and of the victory that we have in Christ. Whenever you get down, you need to tell yourself, I got the victory through Jesus.
Jesus Christ. I'm not telling you something I heard. I'm telling you something I know and I had to do. I got the victory. Amen. In Jesus Christ. You have to be steadfast me. Not turn aside from the faith of the resurrection for yourself. That's right. You must do this part for yourself. Yeah. I want everybody to go to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. But in order to go to heaven, you got to be steadfast in your faith. That's right, sir. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you got to do this for yourself. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Don't, don't, don't let nothing move you. Yeah. 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 Be, be like a house that's built on a solid foundation. It will not be moved. Yeah. I tell you that. I will not be moved. Yeah, yeah, no. Don't let nothing separate you from the love of Christ. Mother Hamlet told us that Friday night. Don't let nothing separate nothing. you yeah. nothing. from the love of Christ. Amen. As a believer, you must sell yourself in spite of all calamity, yeah. issues, problems. Don't be shaken. Right. Settle yourself. Don't be so emotional yeah. that you can't go to God yeah. and cast all your burdens on Him. Yeah. You, you, you can do it. I have prayed for saints. Somebody say saints. saints. I have prayed for saints. It seemed like they didn't know Jesus. They were all emotional. I'm, I'm not talking about crying. We're we going to cry Jesus cried. I'm not talking about being moved. I mean all emotion. You can talk to them. Uh, you can tell them to calm down. Right. They, they, they act like they become unglued. Like they didn't know God. Man, you got to know God for yourself. And you got to be steadfast. Just cry. Uh, 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 rolling all over the floor and acting crazy. I don't know what to do. Go to God. I'm talking about people that testify they know God. You ought to be steadfast. You ought to know how to sell yourself. My God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, now we, we are. If the other men's Intro pastor of the Living World Church of God of Christ. If he's that author right, I might just dance. Right. <laughs> I might just jump up and down and shout and just pray to God. Our church, the Church of God of Christ, we are an emotional group. Ain't nothing wrong with that kind of emotional. Right. God knows that. Right. God is having the praise of his people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm talking about people that act like they come unglued, Mother Stephen. I don't understand that. Speaking of tongues coming out glued, you can't be, you can't get unglued in the law. You got to be steadfast. You got to hold on. Yeah. You must know how to settle your spirit. Yeah, yeah. Settle your spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't be so so emotional. You, 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 I, I couldn't talk to them. They wouldn't calm down. I had to say, God bless you. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. Acting like they didn't know Jesus. Jesus is a life giver. Waters the wine, open blinded eyes, calls the crooked to walk. Yeah. 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 You should reach a place in God where you take your burdens to the Lord yeah. and leave them there. Yeah, yeah leave them there. And, and, and then Paul says, as we're steadfast, you'll be unmovable. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Let nothing move you. Nothing shake your faith. Nothing move you from the hope of the gospel. Don't let other people turn you aside from the word of God. I, uh, I, I used to try to golf, and you can't golf too good in tennis shoes. And, uh, I, I never tried to run track, but my brother used to run track. And uh, he, he, he talked about uh, the cleats they had to wear. Uh -huh. and, and those spikes on the bottom of the shoes help you to grip. Come on, son. Make it play. Uh -huh. Make it play. The same way it is with us. As, as people of God, when we're all unmovable, they ought to be our uh, feet shod with the preparation of gospel peace. There ought to be something that keep you glued to the ground. My God. My God. It might be bad. It might look bad. It is bad. But you ought to stay glued to the ground. You ought to be unmovable. Yeah, yeah. You ought, you ought to be unmovable. Your faith in God. Your faith in the resurrection. And this is what Paul was talking about. There's going to be a resurrection. There's going to be a breaking up. So, so, so we, we got to be, it's like a boxer. 
when, when Mike Tyson hit somebody, you've been hit. <laughs> back, back in the day. And the reason that, that he got so much power because he knew how to play himself. Right. And that's the same way it is. And man, as people go when we're going through, you got to learn how to play yourself. Yeah. 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 I don't let nothing separate me from the love of God. And then Paul said, number three, he said, always abounding. Always. Yeah. In the work of the Lord, perpetual. You see, sometimes we get tied up in our own work. Right. But you need to get tied up in the work of the Lord. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then you can become always, perpetually, always abounding always. in the work of the Lord. Yes, sir. I, I, I was told that nothing is always. always. But Paul says always. always. Right. Come, on, come, on. come on, come on. Always about. Amen. And this change right here when he said always. Oh, yeah. Yeah, always. You, you, you can get into a heavy discussion with someone like your wife. And, uh, and, and sometimes it comes out like you always do things like that. Uh, uh, have y'all ever been there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you, you, you always do that. Uh, yeah. It's only one thing that always is God. That's right. Nobody always do nothing always. Yeah. No one that do something always is God. So Paul tells that we can always abound in a work. Sometimes we get sidetracked because our mind get all the work of the Lord. Yeah. 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 Abounding in the work of the Lord. We know God's work, don't we? Yes, sir. Yeah. Go out and make disciples. Yeah. Do, do good. Do mission work. Do evangelism work. Do teaching work. Thank you, Jesus. Let your light so shine work. Yeah. Use your gift to edify one another. That's awesome. Use your gift to glorify God. Make sure God get the credit. And then Paul said, as I close, Paul said, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The songwriter said, if I labor, God will give me a crown. You have to be like a tree that's planted by the river of water. And then you got to be steadfast. You got to be unmovable. You got to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. I can hear Sister Gladney, Hebrews 6 and 10. For God is not unrighteous to begin your work and labor love, which he has showed toward his name. Hey!
Jesus. Did God bring me through? He did. Did God make a way out of the way? Did God make a night light? Did he open a door that man trying to close? Yeah, if you stand on God's word, everything will be all right. That's what Jesus did. Huh? All night long, they tried him. Couldn't find no fault. Paul said, I can find no fault in this man. But what did Jesus do? He stood. Beat him all night long. What did he do? He stood. Hung him on Calvary. What did he do? He stood. Took him down. He still stood. In the grave. He was still standing up. Out of the grave. He Oh, yeah.